The Berlinale, the Berlinale press, press, press conferences of this day of competition, of competition again tonight on RBB television. A cordial welcome. The first film is the Mexican competition contribution Museo Museum, and it is based on a true story. We are at the National Museum of Mexico. Some students allowed themselves to be locked in in order to steal some very precious Maya artifacts. They were very professional at this, a solid piece of criminal craftsmanship, but then they had huge trouble selling these items, and this turned the movie into a very amusing but also very serious comedy. It's a buddy movie and also a road movie because they embark on a journey to somehow get rid of these Maya artifacts. We also get to see one of the greatest stars from Mexico and that's Gael García Bernal. And here is the press conference for the film Museo. The Instituto Nacional de Antropología e Historia alerta de manera perentoria a la sociedad mexicana contra estos vándalos enemigos de su historia y de su herencia y exhorta a todos los mexicanos para que por todos los medios a su alcance combatan esta acto de lesa cultura y nacionalidad. Can we start? Would you please sit? Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the press conference of the film Museum. 
And we have wonderful guests. I'm introducing them to you from your left. Please welcome one of the producers, Ramiro Ruiz. Welcome to Berlin. And another producer, Alberto Müffelmann. Welcome to Berlin. And this is a director and co-screenwriter, Alonso Ruiz Palacios. Wonderful that you're here. And the great actor who played Ben Wilson, Leonardo Ortiz Gris. The actress who played Silvia, Ilse Salas. Welcome. And the producer and co-screenwriter, Manuel Alcala. Welcome. And another producer, Gerardo Gatica. Welcome. So maybe let me start with uh, asking to, uh, a question to the director. Um, I think I've never seen a film where thieves, you know, find their moral at the end. First they are thieves, but at the end they go out of the film as better people in a way. They have stolen something, but still they're, you know, they've, they found something else. It's not like normal. Normally they take the money and they go somewhere. So maybe tell us something about this moral behind this story. <laughs> Well, I think um, th that was the when, when we started. When I got offered this project by uh, by um, Alberto and Ger and Gerardo, um, and started working on the screenplay with Manuel, the first thing that I became interested in was the the, the journey, the sort of crime and punishment journey of the of the characters, and. Uh, when I found out that the main guy who did it, the character that Gael plays, uh, his father was a doctor, my father is a doctor as well, um, I think that was my connection to the story. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so that made me more interested in their own personal lives than, than in the heist itself, than, than in, uh, the, you know, they, they are very uncommon thieves. So for me it was always about finding the, uh, the inner journey of how a, a little kid who who can be uh, you know who can do pranks in school and and uh, how that someone like that some, suddenly becomes a world class criminal you know mm -hmm. so it was all about the internal journey mm -hmm. I think that's what Manuel and I were kind of aiming for. Mm -hmm. There's a question on the right. Yes. Alonso aqui, Rodrigo Fonseca, from TV Globo Brasil. Congratulations on the film. The screen work is amazing. Could you talk a bit about the screenplay and also the camera? Uh, in English? Yes, in English. <laughs> uh, okay, so the work on the script, well, me and Manuel, th this story uh, started with Manuel, who... Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a very famous story in Mexico. It's a, a story that you know it's based on events that happened in 1985. We 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 of course departed from the real story as as the screenplay developed. But Manuel started writing this ten years ago, and uh, I came into this film about three years ago. Yeah, and we four, four years ago. <laughs> four of them. Uh, and, and uh, I think the, the work, the, the hard part of doing something like this is, is how the real events kind of at some point become an obstacle in the telling of a good story, which is kind of what, the, what we ended up with, you know, the, why tell the truth, why ruin a good story by telling the truth. We kind of, when we found that for ourselves, we discovered that we had to be more free with the story. So the whole screenplay process for me was about getting rid of elements from the real story that were kind of hindering us from finding out our own story and the story that we wanted to tell. I, I am always interested with these themes of, of lost youth, of, of uh, idleness, uh, and, and also sense of, of identity, you know, national identity and how that, how, how that kind of fights against personal identity. So it was a process of, of like getting rid of real uh, 
elements and, and, and kind of coming down to focusing everything on the, on the inner journey of Leo's and Gael's character. It was about eliminating external uh, things, external things like plot and, and uh, you know, being more true to, to the character's uh, frame of mind, I think. I don't know, Manuel. Mm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I guess that that was you know combining elements from the story of, from the real story. No, that happened a lot. A lot of merging characters and a lot of merging situations that served the the characters in the story more than you know the telling the factual telling of a story. Yeah. And so it's more of a process of of deciding which things to take away from the from the true story yeah. and which things to keep as well. Yeah, I think one of the things that uh, I'm I'm in the end really grateful for is that the real the families of the real characters who did this crime hadn't didn't want anything to do with the film manuel reached out to them at the beginning and they said fuck off we don't want we don't we don't please don't make this film and i think in the end that was a gift at first we saw it as an obstacle but i think at the end it turned out as a gift and 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 it made us uh, you know, find the it's find the story afresh. You know, and about the cinematography. Uh, I mean, I've worked with Damian, my wonderful DP. I think he's the best DP in Mexico. Uh, I've worked with him for for uh, like over ten or twelve years now, uh, and he's a big collaborator on the film. Like we we. We decided very early on that we wanted to shoot 35. The whole film was shot in 35, very proudly. So it was a big fight with our producers, but we, we got there. And I think it was worth it. Um, it just, um, I mean, I think a story like this needed, needed the grain and the warmth and the depth of color of 35. Um, and the framing, I think, was also to do with leaving a lot of things outside the frame and, and, and I think it took it took us a while to find out uh, like a guiding star. I think you always need a guiding star as a director, and our guiding star was to to follow the, what I said before the the inner motivation. So it was like to leave outside the frame everything that wasn't about Juan's and Wilson's inner inner journey. I think that's what I can say about the photography. There's a question on the right. Thank you very much for the film. I enjoyed it. I wanted a couple of questions. First of all, uh, we've heard a lot about this ethical question. Are museums an open place, accessible for all, or is this just about plunder, kept for posterity? You mentioned the British Museum and also the Austrian Museum, so this ethical debate comes up again and again. Perhaps you could comment on this. And then we briefly if we see an extract of the earthquake in 1984, which caused an awful lot of victims, and then they switch off because they're talking about the robbery at the museum, where people haven't lost their lives. Can you comment on that reaction to the television stories? Well, definitely. One of the, you know, one of the biggest points about the robbery was that it happened only four months after, after the earthquake. So that, that's what also I think the robbery was such an impact on, on Mexican society that it was sort of adding insult to, un to injury is, is how people put it, you know, because it, was, it seemed that it was just a total disregard by, by the government that, that it happened. And I think it, but we didn't, as, again, we didn't want it to be, you know, we didn't want to center on, on events that veered away from the, from the story. And I think, I think one of the, one of also, you know, a major point within the character's life was that they weren't very, you know, they weren't impacted by the earthquake because they lived outside of the city, they lived in satellite. So that also, that's a big sort of a character trait, you know, these suburban kids that kind of lived through this major event but weren't really participants in it, as, as many of, uh, you know, because in 85, Mexican society sort of really pulled together for the earthquake and helped out. And I think this alienation from that is also part of, of the character's alienation um, in the film. Mm. And, and then the looting sense also, I think that's also, you know, when we wrote the screenplay, the three things, you know, the or one thing that we, that we always, you know, besides the relationship between the friends, between Wilson and, um, and, uh, and wow. Juan, and, uh, and the relationship between the father, the other big issue that we always kept was 
was this theme of looting, you know, whether it's, you know, looting, you know, looting yourself even, you know, looting your own nation, um, and, or who had the right to have the pieces in the museum. I think these themes came across when we wrote the script. Y creo que también, eh, I think something else, de las the reaction of the authorities is something that was very striking in the film. We had a lot of documentary material about what happened, and this reaction, bearing in mind thinking that the international crime must be involved, the kind of people who would normally rob the Louvre or the British Museum, and in fact it's only two young guys of 21 studying veterinary science. So that is something that I think had a bit of an impact at the time. Yes, one on the left. Hello, I'm Christine from Canada. Um, how is it possible to understand uh, the character of Juan? Uh, it's the point of the film we don't really know about him, but sometimes he's is like a small-time thief. Sometimes he seems like the spiritual son of Pakal or a patriot. But at the same, it's really difficult to to follow him. Have you try? Have you? Do you think you have managed to figure him out? <laughs> I haven't actually. No, not at all. To be honest, I mean, I think. I think one of the one of the nice things about this story for me was to not know much about the the the, the real characters. Like we we asked around, we we you know Manuel did, did this whole research. We asked we, uh, friends of his and everything, but it was very op opaque. You know, everything about him was uh, contradictory, and so I I, I thought that that's the way he should be in the film and, and for me it was important not to answer not to have a definite answer when his father asks him why did you do it he shouldn't answer I think because who the fuck knows you know he, he like we don't know as a, as a country and I don't think he knew why he did it there were probably many reasons but it's a very stupid thing to do and a, and a very life changing thing to do to commit a, a robbery of of that kind, uh, but you know, especially when you see who 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 did it. So so, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I tried to get to know him for you know three years, but I didn't. I, I I don't think I I came close. And I think that's kind of for me what the film is about. You can't really know why somebody did what what they did. You know, the, um, you can only be there beside them and know the facts, but. But they don't solve the mystery, I think. And I think you kind of, it's frustrating, I think, for, for, uh, for Mexico also, like, to not to know the answers to such questions. You know, why the fuck did you do this? Why? And, and it, it's, it's kind of frustrating, but you have to live with not knowing. No, that, I think that's the hard, the hard part. Maybe Leonardo can say something about why Ben <laughs> joined them, why he did it. Did you figure out your character? Eh, hola. Este, yo, el personaje de I think Wilson, the eh, character, the Wilson con, character, con Juan relates very Sofía, much to Juan, amigo, is his big friend maestro, in life, his maestro, if you like. Tiene, que, que And I think Juan the relationship that Wilson has with Juan siempre, is he will follow him whatever siempre, he does, ¿no? Entonces, este, forever. Creo que, que Wilson se He's va consistent este, in that, banda, and that México, is Wilson's eh, path. Without really being at all clear about sin, what they're doing, how profound it is, how deep it is, how in, important it is, creo que Wilson jamás, jamás duda and de la, Juan has de, de some confusion Juan, about it, eh, but pues, Wilson never eh, doubts what como, Juan como is doing, como un niño, and se va, se va con, con he's very fond of his father, and he treats Juan maybe a little bit in a similar way, places his faith in him. It's a daring thing to do, and it keeps growing. It grows on them all the time, like a snowball, and that's the result. Thank you. There was a question. Peter Paul Huth, uh, German Television. Um, there's a lot of mentioning of uh, the, uh, the, the place where they live and where they grew up, uh, Satellite. And could you explain us more the relationship between Satellite and, 
um, center of uh, Mexico town. And also, I'm curious about the, the relationship between the son and the father plays such a big mm. uh, impact. Um, why was it so important for you? Uh, I'll answer the first, the second question first. Um, I think the why why it was important for me was probably um, it was my way into the story. Like you know, you always find uh, something that relates to you personally. And as I said, my my father is a doctor. I I studied acting, so I think it was a kind of a, <laughs> a down downhill from from being a renowned doctor. Uh, so I can I could relate to to that you know like not living up to certain expectations and that now I, I I'm sure my dad is proud of me now but uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fine, <laughs> <that's not laughs> uh, but yeah when so when the, the real life character was a was a doctor uh, he was a surgeon and and the son was a vet student who didn't even finish school and committed the you know this this heinous crime. Uh, and so I, that, just that in itself was so attractive to me, like to say, what a disappointment, what frustration. <coughs> but it's also a way of the son of saying fuck you to his father. And, uh, you know, there must, be, there must have been so many c complex things there that I don't, you know, I don't know for, for real what, what happened in there. But I, it, was, it was a way in for me to try to imagine that relationship. And it, as the more we got into it, we, we heard stories also about the father. He, apparently, he, he went to sleep with, a, with a, like his tie on. We, we heard such <laughs> stories. So he was a very like, you know, straight man. And, and, and so we made him into a, this very serious, dignified character. Uh, and, and so I think it kind of enhances the sense of frustration and, and rebelliousness of, uh, from Juan. Um, I just find that the, the father, now that I'm a father myself also, I, I, I find those, those relationships like endlessly fascinating and complex. So that was important. And uh, the first thing satellite. I forgot. Oh, satellite. Satellite. Um, satellite. I don't know. Do you guys want to talk about sa uh, satellite? Well, I think satellite was part of the, I think it was built in the 50s and it, was, it is a server. It is outside Mexico City, but it doesn't belong to the culture of Mexico City. It is a different uh, way of living. It is like an American dream in Mexico. Yeah. So the whole idea was to have like these kind of uh, self houses, exactly, yeah. self-contained. It is another community. And it's uh, like we say in Mexico that the people that live in satellite, they actually live in the States. Yeah. No, they are the ones who have all the, the first McDonald's and the first uh, this kind of... Um, of uh, the American way of life, basically. Yeah. So they don't have like walls or like uh, big uh, doors. No, everything is more open, and uh, they used to live like um, I would say a, a little bit more free. Mm. No, and uh, yeah. <laughs> but 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 what was uh, Alonso saying before? It's true. I mean, the, the the earthquake didn't didn't bring them into the city. It was like. Uh, Always a part. Yeah. 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 It's another part. Even though it's the same city, it is uh, completely different. Actually, no. they have like a nickname. Uh, <laughs> it's, we, we call satelucos, which is people that live in satellite. And yeah, I think it's, it's, it's kind of the, a matter, like, like it was perfect when, when we found out that the kids who did this weren't a band of 20 international thieves, you know, that <laughs> were behind the theft of the Mona Lisa and all that bullshit. It was like two fucking kids from this really crappy serb. No, crappy. Don't say crap. Um, from this, no, it's middle nobody class. Say crappy. Yeah, this middle class suburb. And uh, it's a very complicated place that kind of has developed its own identity. Uh, it was fascinating that they, it was perfect that they came from there. It was like a, a perfect heist for Mexico, you know? It was like a metaphor for, for everything, for, for all things Mexican, I think. It was like a. Weird and bizarre, but fascinating also, and, and and full of energy as well. You know, satellite has kind of come it, come into its own. It was like a, a the promise of a place that was meant to be this American d suburb, with you know self-contained uh, businesses in there. People were like when they built it in the 50s. The architect Pani and the, and the Barragan and you know, some of Mexico's top architects. They kind of thought of this as a solution to, to the city's problems, you know? And, it, and of course, it, it failed completely. Like, by the 80s, 
it was already a failed project in that in that it it you know people had to travel for hours to their work they they didn't you know it was it wasn't a self-contained place um, but still in that failure there was you know there's life and there's people who 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 were who who kind of developed their own sense of pride in in that suburb so it's a very interesting place no, also the museum was built maybe like 10 years after so mm -hmm. like the museum yeah. and the building of satellite are very sort of this promise of mexican modernism that <laughs> changed into something else yeah Okay, there's one on the left. Yeah, um, uh, as a Mexican, my, my, my question uh, will be, especially for you, Alonso, uh, like a young director, how do you feel to see your, uh, your movie, this is your second movie, and to see this movie in such a big uh, screen? Eh? And uh, your first movie came here to the Berlinale. And my question is about the commercialization of your uh, films, because you're bringing us a different image uh, from Mexico, a part of uh, the terrible stories about drugs and, and, and the terrible image our country, especially here, uh, that, that, that we have. And uh, was your intention to, to show uh, our uh, may, maybe our very Mexican values, eh? how um, the loyalty, uh, the life, uh, the family, how do we um, celebrate uh, Christmas that your family is not the family, only you, your husband and your children. No, family is all the family, the uncles and, and all uh, part of the big uh, family. Those very, very special values for mm. our society and the loyalty between those two really eh, com, kumpels, eh? very two, two very uh, quates. Eh? What part of your intention to bring us and to show that's, that's <coughs> what we are. And, uh, uh, you weren't, uh, were you uh, in touch uh, with, uh, not with the, the guys, but maybe with members of the family, someone or friends or something like that? Well, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the first thing about what well, I presenting here in the Berlinale is, is fantastic. I mean, yesterday we did the screen tests and it was a dream, you know, I had chills just being there with an empty hall and watching my film in that big screen I thought it's never gonna look like this again you know uh, it was beautiful so it's beautiful it's a I mean I love this place I, I I love the fact that it's the only festival that sells tickets for every single show every single showing and it's so it's more about the people than critics and all that uh, so I, it, I, I think it's a beautiful place um, and about the, uh, my attitude towards the film and bringing all, the, all these stories, I, I don't know, I think uh, for me, film is a... Damian, my DP, you were asking earlier about my, my, my uh, for cinematographer, we always... Uh, he always quotes to me that what uh, Truffaut said, that, that there are films that show the agony of filmmaking and there are films that show the joy of filmmaking, that the films can be divided into those two. And, and I think we've tried to do the second, the, the, the make films about the joy of, because it's very, you know, we're very fortunate. We we never forget that, that in Mexico, we are fortunate to to, to be able to have final cut, to be able to, you know, I am I am gonna say this. I, I'm very thankful for these producers for for trusting me and Manuel to to get away with murder, you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a very hard thing to find somebody who trusts your vision who says, "Okay, let's." Uh, this sounds stupid, but let's do it. Uh, so I am really, really grateful. Um, and and I think it's uh, yeah. I, I I am very interested in stories that celebrate uh, the, the part of Mexico that I know. You know, I, I come from a middle class family. I, I'm I'm not. You know, I I don't come from the slums. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, that's it's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> so I like to, you know, there's there's many beautiful things uh, also there, and you know, troubling things as well, dark things. But but I think Mexico is like such a vast and complex place that uh, that I am very much interested in in in, in celebrating my. Country. I'm very proud of it, and and I'm very proud of of having shot in the. Mayan ruins of Palenque and, and in that wonderful museum and just, I think just that, just showing that is like, 
being able to shoot there is a, is a, deserves a celebration. So we try to honor that with the film, you know? We try to honor that with the shots. Like, we were just in that museum and we were thinking, all this story that's inside this museum, you know, thousands of, hundreds of years of, of, of history and, and uh, we must honor it with a good frame at least, you know? So that's, that's what we try to do. I think you also honored with the music, uh, with this beautiful Night of the Mayas uh, song that is oh, playing yeah. all through the, the, the haste itself, which is really wonderful. Thank you for yeah. that. Let's go back to one question per person again. Thank you. Next one, please. Uh, bueno, hace unas semanas en, uh, Gael a, a few weeks ago, I think you said that to make a film, it's very different having the project on paper and actually being out there on the shoot and making the film. How did this film change from the plan, the drawing board, to the implementation? And can you tell us a little bit perhaps about the, the beach and the bar, which was actually quite an amusing part, quite entertaining little anecdotes there. the first question? How did it change from when you first... <laughs> uh, well, yeah, like uh, Alonso had said, this is a project that I've been researching and doing for a long time. Sorry, <laughs> we have a little... <laughs> Very welcome interruption. Hello. You want to sit, you want to sit here? <laughs> Chair, please. We have a chair for you here, if you please, don't please. mind. Okay, does he have one? Okay, so you should. No, you know who this is? Please welcome Gael Garcia Bernal. <laughs> Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you so much. Manuel, so, you want to finish and then we go um, and have a nice greeting? I think it mostly changed uh, no, going into, I think like Alonso had said, no, the, the story changed towards going into what worked for the story and the characters. I think, I think that's what, that was the biggest change and it kept going over and over, you know, where we would merge characters, merge situations and, uh, and then, in, you know, and then in, in the editing, I think it was just a matter of, <laughs> making it, making it work, shorten it <laughs> from, a, from a first four-hour cut or something yeah. like that. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, she's, she's asking about the ficheras, which is a, like, almost like a national genre of film. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, the real, the, 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 these guys got involved with this uh, actress who was in like these B-movies. They're not porn movies, they're like... Este, Soft porn. Yeah, soft porn movies. Uh, no, vedettes. They're, it's, it's something else. They're, they're vedettes and... Uh, <laughs> we get disturbed all the time. <laughs> he made it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, that, that was part of the real story as well. So, I mean, I, I think we kind of wanted to honor that genre by going into that when he meets her. So we had, you know, when Manuel and I were writing this, we, we said, what is this missing? This is missing a fight. <laughs> and we said, but that, that'll be just gratuitous. But, so that was perfect, you know? It was like, let's just put a gratuitous fight <laughs> in there. Uh, and so that's, that's, that's the story of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Next question on the left. Yeah. Gracias. Sonia Riquer, gente de Cine Radio Educación. Bueno, qué grata sorpresa nos acaba de What llegar. a great surprise to see you here. It was a, a great joy to see you here. But Museo Museum is a great film. It's very rich in many aspects. The architecture as well, the pyramids that we see, all this atmosphere that you get with the Night of the Maya, and this helps to make this story, to lend it an atmospheric weight that it is a joy to share. But I'd also like to know, you have a sense of humor, Alonso. Maybe it's very Mexican, maybe it's very sateluco, but uh, it's different. I think at national 
level, people do laugh a lot, but sometimes we don't quite get the joke. It is a very successful film, though, and you also direct stage plays. You must have been training up your actors for your plan, and what's it like for the actors? What was it like for you making this film? How did I, I choose the actors first? There was nobody else, so he was the last on the list. And he <laughs> 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 like we went through everyone, and and no, I'm, <laughs> I, I no, actually, I, he was like the first person I thought like who who had the traits. He's short, like me. <laughs> No, he had to be charming and dark as well, and and kind of you know I, when I see his films, sometimes I never know what's going on behind his gaze, and I really liked that for Juana. That was very important for from what I said at the start, not to not to be able to know exactly to pinpoint what he's thinking. I find that disturbing with him when I when I talk to him, he's like looking at me like, and I say he wants to kiss me or punch me or. <laughs> 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 so, so yeah, he he was uh, the guy for this. I, sh I I showed him the script and he liked it, and he, thankfully he came on board. And and then for the for the rest, we did we some some of the people in the cast I, are from my theater company. I have a theater company in Mexico, so I've worked with them, Leo uh, and Bernardo, who's a fantastic actor. <laughs> um, yeah, I, li I like working with friends, you know, I think uh, film is, is painful enough, so I think you should try to be surrounded by friends as much as you can. Um, yeah, and then the Chilean father, uh, I, I, I mean, I saw his films with, with um, uh, La Rain, and, and I, you know, like everyone, I think he's fantastic, he, was like, he has such weight. And it was, so we started fantasizing. We couldn't find somebody that had the exact features that I wanted for the father who was like, you know, I had my father in mind for some, some reason. And, uh, and then when I met Alfredo and called him, he was, he, he, he's such a sweet man, but he can be really strong as well. So I needed, I think he was perfect for it. Yeah. That was one on the right. <laughs> cooperate with filmmakers to show how works of art are stolen from their galleries. Mm -hmm. What happened with the museum and why did they agree to uh, collaborate? Were the, were the events so well known that it didn't matter? I can, I can take that actually. <laughs> um, well, the museum was very collaborative, collaborative with us. So was the National uh, Institute of Anthropology. For, uh, we've been in we were in conversations with them for four years before actually shooting the film. So uh, we understood the relevance of shooting uh, in the museum as well as in the ruins of Palenque. Uh, and they thankfully were uh, gracious enough to jump on board with us, support us with the, with the project. Although we did uh, understood some uh, concerns they had with respect to the safety of the, of, the, of the pieces, of the places. With the history, they were, with the story, they were completely on board because, well, we cannot deny that happened. So they were supportive in that way, but we also, uh, by the hand of our production designer, Sandra Cabriada, uh, recreated the ins She's right there, actually, by the way. Uh, we recreated the inside of the exhibit rooms in the museum, the inside of the ruins in Palenque, and over a thousand pieces of anthropology, which are like exact replicas of what we have in the museum and uh, how they were presented in the 1985 when it was robbed. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, they, they were completely supportive of the, of the film and of big help for us. Do they have a better security system now in the museum? Excuse me? Do they have a better security system Oh, now? yeah, of course, yeah, no. yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. There's one on the left. Uh, Grande Federico, a question for the director. Congratulations, by the way, very interesting movie, f fantastic. And also, uh, Garcia Bernal, fantastic role. Um, I would like to ask you, how did you organize the work in the museum? Uh, and uh, if you inspire yourself to other movies uh, shot in museums? Thank you so much. To the director? Sí. Uh, 
uh, sorry, I didn't catch the first one. What was hey, it? Please, Peter, please. Compared to how other did films, the the how did we organize the work in the museum? I, I think that's for the producer. I mean, I, I, I guess. Um, see, yeah, w w one of the uh, one of the things with this film that w we always said that people are, are going to think that we just shot in the museum, and we we shot on the on the exteriors of the museum, but like uh, Gerardo said, I think uh, Sandra Cabriada, our wonderful production designer and all her team, they did a fantastic job of create, recreating the, all the halls, all the insides, are, they're, they're sets that, that we built, and they were spectacular sets. So uh, it was a, I mean, of course, all, all, everything that happened in the museum was, we, was you know, long time planning and storyboarding and, and and making the exterior and the interior meld together, you know. Um, so it was a very careful work of that, so it's seamless. I think the tragedy in, for Sandra is that her work is so great that people are not going to notice it. People <laughs> will think that it's just a museum, but it's, it's not. Um, and about the, yeah, we, we, we saw some heist movies. Uh, uh, and we, you know, once we started digging into the heist movie genre, we like became fascinated, Manuel and I, with it, and, and then with Damian and, and, and with the actors as well. Particularly Rifi Fi, uh, I think that's the best heist movie ever. Um, and, and it was fun to, to kind of watch heist movies as we were preparing this, because we were like all the time thinking, this is so not a heist movie, you know? <laughs> there is a heist, but that's about the only, the only thing. Uh, uh, so, so it was interesting to inform our film with, with watching heist movies uh, to, to find out that we had to go some, someplace else. You know? So since uh, Gael also has a microphone, maybe the next question <laughs> could be for him, hopefully. There's one on the right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, Luciana Veras from Content Magazine in Brazil. Actually, I have a question for the actors, Gael, Leonardo, and Yussi. What are your memories regarding these two huge events in Mexican history, the robbery itself and the earthquake? Uh, were, were these two episodes something you guys related to when you were kids? And if so, did you bring these memories to the shooting? Thank you. We're not that old, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> that, you know. No, the, the, we, we, I think uh, maybe, uh, Definitely, Ilse does not remember. <laughs> you remember? What? No, you don't no, remember the earthquake. earthquake. Oh, the earthquake, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the earthquake, because the, the earthquake was something that definitely struck us deeply, and uh, and uh, we were all I, I don't know. I, I was six years old or so, six years old. So the earthquake was something that definitely uh, shook us, but. The concept or, you know, the, the idea of someone stealing a museum, I hardly knew what a museum was at that time. You know, I, I didn't understand the, the, I don't know, like it was such a confusion. And maybe it was part of, of the, the time we were living in, you know, the disinformation that we were living in. Uh, the fact that, uh, for example, the earthquake, the earthquake happened. And um, I remember two days after people reading newspapers wanting to know what happened with the earthquake even though we would see it outside, but we, we also had to read it from somewhere. No, I mean, that's something that has definitely changed now, nowadays. Um, so no, I have, no, I don't have absolutely no memory of the, of the robbery of the, earth, uh, of, uh, of the museum, but, uh, but the people that tell me that, uh, sorry, my, I just come from an airplane, sorry, my English is, um, <laughs> the memories of people that were, alive during the, the robbery, for example. Uh, some of them remembered it, but I found it really weird that the first time I heard about that robbery was through, through Alonso. Like, I didn't, I didn't know that somebody had stolen the... Like, it was something that maybe people lived, but, you know, for example, we all lived the moment that the... Remember the Challenger? Exploding. It's only people that were alive at back then that remember that. But we don't talk about the challenge yet, no? So maybe it's that. Maybe it's something like um, nobody talked about it, and then when he comes and, yeah, these guys stole the, you know, the Museum of Anthropology in 1985 during Christmas. During Christmas? What? Like, you know, st started to, to listen to the story for the first time. 
the other actors? Bueno, pues yo también tenía como seis años. Six, I was six as well. Four, Four surely. I can work it out. I can do my maths. But basically, I remember that there was all this talk about the earthquake and the rumbling and of course we were glued to our televisions. There was a journalist I think who was called Darudovsky and they kept telling us what was happening in the city, in Mexico City. So it was a pretty big year because we were all depressed because of the World Cup, it was the same time, 86. So there was a whole load going on in politics plus the earthquake and it was a big blow to the government. So when this robbery came up, the only thing I heard was a year ago when someone told me the story. And the strange thing is, you start talking to people about it, and you start talking to them about the heist, and they suddenly remember, and they tell you their memories. Who were the people? What happened to them afterwards? One did this, what happened to the other one? And he died? No, he didn't. They killed him? No, they didn't. So there's a whole load of myths that have grown up around these two characters. And we don't know where they are. I think it's quite interesting, actually, because when I started to look for information about who my character was, Raymond Sardino is the real name of Wilson, Nobody knew, nobody knew anything. So I started trying to meet people and they say, Raymond Sardino, yeah, he was the son-in-law of, uh, I don't know. Oh yeah, he studied with my friend so-and-so. So then we started to build up our own tissue of details. And of course, the more you ask, the more you find out from the people you talk to. Bueno. En, en realidad a mí, well, for me, o sea, lo, lo, lo curioso de haber the strange thing, if you fue, go back so long in memory, ensaya, when Alonso, as a director, he does a lot of rehearsal before we actually shoot the film. No, no, no es tan común hacerlo en cine y para reconstruir la familia, la It's not quite the same in Juan. cinema. Eh, he, we were lucky enough, as we were working on these memories, talking to people who remembered the 80s, we did talk to people who had much clearer memories, and so we talked to our aunts and our uncles and this kind of thing, and we, we couldn't Google, there wasn't stuff out there really, so we, we talked to people, and we looked at the scenes and we thought, I don't think it could happen in the same way these days. So that was quite entertaining. But setting up those links and trying to work out what Mexico was like back in the 80s, and also in Satélite, in this suburb, which has its own story, that was quite interesting. And of course, it's such a long time ago, we didn't have a lot of time to think about the dynamics, but certainly it had a, a certain charm of its own, it was different. <laughs> Next question. Uh, my name is Mahari Seguid, African Refugee News. First of all, thank you, because this is a very beautiful film, the acting, the interaction between the actors, the family. But more, it's good for uh, Mexico, not because of the drug thing, because there is a stupid who wants to make, build up a wall, but not only this. He wants also to take away the factories from Mexico and take them to America to make more people jobless. So this is very good because we had fun. And the question is for uh, Garcia. Uh, you started with very hard films like Che, then you brought here a beautiful film about the activist. And now you, you are, uh, let's, let's say, uh, bringing us in a new dimension of your career, make us also laugh. Can you tell us more how you went to this problem? I, I, 
well, it, it's always um, uh, it's always a challenge to say to talk about the way that one does things because, in a way, um, I really have no method in that sense. It is a it is something that happens on a on a day to day thing, I guess, uh, depending on my necessities and, and most of the necessities uh, are have to do. I'm lucky enough to to be able to to choose what I like doing. And, um, and from the moment that, that Alonso approached me to, to talk about this, which was, I've got to say, many, many years ago, <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost doing an actual story <laughs> that just happened. No, no but it was, it was like uh, four years, three years, yeah, four, four years. three, four years ago or something. Um, it, was, it, 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 it was something that it was, it was a must, you know? To do and to uh, because I've, I admire uh, Alonso's work a lot and, and we share a friendship from a long time ago so it was it was it was, it was definitely something that we had to I don't know had to participate and uh, wanted to do a film in Mexico as well um, it, you know it, it's just I mean and the story of course and then just everything comes together but it, it was Alonso who brought me into this so it is it is through through him that I kind of decide what to do. Um, and this is what happens mostly in all projects. It's through the directors that they kind of hunt me into something and then it becomes something bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so that, that's, and here we are, you know? It is, it is great to be able to do this and to do other things and to work in other places and, and right now, I just arrived because I'm, I'm rehearsing a play right now, so uh, it is really nice to do all this kind of collage. Yeah. I'm very sorry, I know that you're mad at me, but uh, these people have been here for almost an hour now, and I would like to thank you very much, but we have to shut this down because of time reasons. Thank you so much for being here, thank you, Bell, for coming in so late. Thank you very much.